Hey guys, it's Laney Shaughnessy back with another CNC USB controller tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about uh, really setting up your first job and uh, each job after that. There's uh, some simple steps that you're going to repeat each time you do a job. You're going to import your G code. You're going to position your router over your XY datum position, which is your starting position, your zero position. Uh, once you manually position it uh, in it, whether you're starting off on the center of your material or off of one of the corners you're going to manually jog the router over to that position you're going to zero out your x and y axis that'll lock in your home position for your x and y axis and then you're going to touch off your z uh, based on how you have it set up in the g code uh, when you created your design in the vetric software you either set your z touch off to be the top of the material or the bottom of the material which would either technically be the tabletop or the waste board uh, you know underneath the material depending on if you're doing a profile cut alright so first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and import the G code so we can gonna go up here to file and you can either use open or import G code to bring in your G code and in this case I'm gonna use the import G code option so from there we're gonna navigate down to the G code and click open to bring it in once it loads the G code uh, if we look if we zoom in uh, closely here we can see that the uh, little indicator here this is our Y and our X axis indicator and it's laid out if we zoom back out it's laid out in the center of our job this is our XY datum position It's the center of the job on this so I want to manually jog the router over to the center of my material so you can either use the uh, control switches here on the software to manually jog your router or you can use your controller pendant to manually jog your router so what we want to do is uh, go ahead and clamp our board down on our table and before I clamp the board down I'm using a straight edge to indicate or draw out the center mark on the material uh, so after I get the center mark uh, drawn out by going from corner to corner to find that center go ahead and clamp the board to the table now once the board is clamped to the table I'm gonna go ahead and again you can either use the toggle switches in the uh, software here but I'm gonna go ahead and use our control pendant and I'm going to position the router over the center mark of the material once I have it there and I have it in position to where the center of that bit is over my center mark uh, over my starting position I'm gonna go ahead and zero out the X and Y axis and I'm gonna do that by using these little radio buttons here in the software I'm going to zero out my X axis and zero out my Y axis this is set the home position for the X and Y so if I were to uh, move the router uh, you can see that little yellow dot there indicates the router and the position and everything I can actually bring the router back home by using this XY with the four green arrows that says go to zero XY I can actually click that button to bring my router back to the home position all right, so we've, we've set our X and Y axis. We've set our home position for X and Y axis. Now we have to deal with the Z axis. So on the Z axis, there are two ways to touch off your Z. Uh, on the digital wood carver, you have a touch plate, little flat metal touch plate. Um, and you want to make sure that the touch plate has continuity. So if I were to take my touch plate right now and touch my router bit, look at down here below in the bottom left hand corner of the software where the mouse is see the word sensor pop up that lets me know that I have continuity between my bit and my touch plate so uh, as long as I have continuity then I'm good to touch off so let me reposition my touch plate and again I'm going to uh, either use my toggle switches or my control pendant to manually touch off or I can automatically touch off my Z so I'm going to show you both methods to automatically touch off your Z you want to lay your touch plate flat on your material underneath the router bit because the router is going to slowly come down touch off and then come back up and park itself so once you have that touch plate in position 
we can come over here to this Z button here with the three blue arrows and the one gold arrow and we can touch off our Z by pressing that button the router will come down touch off come back up and park itself now notice in the uh, Z axis here that it's reading 0.74975. I don't want to zero out my Z because I've automatically touched it off. It touched off, registered the zero point, it took into account the thickness of that gauge, and then it went back up and it parked itself about three quarters of an inch above the board. It is done. It's automatically done. Now, that is automatically touching off your Z. And again, remember, it's the Z button with the three blue arrows and the one gold arrow. And if you put your mouse over it, as you see here, it reads offset measure offset Z. Okay, so that's the button you wanna to use to automatically touch off. Now, to manually touch off your Z, we're going to use either the toggle switches here, the Z toggle switches here, or the toggle switches on our control pendant. We're again going to position the touch plate flat on our material, right underneath our bit, and we're going to lower the Z down manually. Now when that, when that bit makes contact with the touch plate, it's going to stop. It won't let it lower anymore because that continuity connection is going to be made. So when it stops, it's going to be stopping touching off at the top of that touch plate and we can zero out our Z and then actually type in the actual position that it's in because it's not truly a zero. It's sitting at 10 thousandths of an inch above the board because that's how thick our touch plate is. So to touch off manually, we're gonna position the uh, touch plate right underneath the uh, router bit, flat on our material, and I'm gonna use the uh, control, uh, the Z control on the controller pendant again you can use the the control toggle switches in the software but I'm going to use the control pendant we're going to lower the Z down now once it makes contact it will not let me lower anymore it's it's made that continuity contact so it will stop automatically now once it stopped we need to come over here to our Z and we need to use this little radio button we need to zero it out and then we're going to come in here and we're manually going to type 0 0.010 which is the thickness of that touch plate that's letting it know exactly where that router is and we're going to hit enter and lock that position in so now our Z is zeroed out so that's the two methods for zeroing out your Z you have the manual method where you come down and it manually touches off and stops and then you program that position or the automatic method by using the Z offset button to automatically touch off and then it'll go back up and park itself. Once we do that, we can go ahead and we are ready to run our job. All right, guys, well, I hope this helps. Uh, just keep in mind that you do have your start, stop, and pause buttons right here, and you also have an emergency stop in case you need to manually stop your machine for whatever reason. Now keep this in mind, if you use the emergency stop on the front of your control box, the big black box uh, and the, the uh, control on the underneath the table, if you use that emergency stop, it's an absolute power killer. It'll kill all the power and shut everything off. If you use the emergency stop in the software, it will stop the machine in its tracks. It'll stop it, but your, your router and your vacuum will still be running. You're going to have to manually turn those off by using the spindle button, which is found up here in the top screen. It uh, looks like a big green arrow running around a tool. Uh, if you put your mouse over it, it says spindle M301. Uh, that is your spindle button to manually turn your router on and off. So. If you have to ever have to hit that emergency stop, come over and uh, turn off your spindle using this button. All right, guys. Well, I hope that helps with getting you started with you running your first job. Import your G-code. Position your router over your starting position, whether you're working off the uh, bottom corner the, or any of the four corners of your material or off the center. And in our example, we worked off the center. Manually move it over to that position, the center of our material. Zero out the X and Y and touch off the Z either manually or automatically and once you do those three things your home position your machine zero position is set and you're ready to start the job 
all right guys well I hope this helps uh, you get started and in the next uh, tutorial we're going to talk about scaling our projects and rotating them uh, a lot of times when we create a project we may create a project for a 12 by 12 piece of material but we happen to want to run that job and we reach in our scrap bin and the material may not be exactly 12 by 12 so we're going to have to scale the design down to fit on that material or we may have to scale it up you know we might want to scale it up to a larger uh, scale we'll talk about scaling and rotating in the next tutorial all right guys until next time I'll see you soon.